day-to-day -day living is, is just a, a, a depressing thing simply because you're not able to do what you used to do when you were younger. I got diagnosed with this condition 32 years ago and I actually gave up smoking 30 years ago. And I, I know that physically my body is getting older so it can't tolerate what it used to. And getting starved of the adequate supply of oxygen doesn't help a lot, you know. So the prognosis going forward, if you don't do anything, is not good. One looks at the options of transplants, and that sounds all great. And if a donor came along with a good heart and lung, which I would need, because they tend to do both, why do you give it to a 68-year-old anyway? Of course your family tolerate you, but it's not a nice feeling to know that you've been tolerated. Everybody's worried, oh, you know, Dad can't do this, or, you know, and I want to be able to walk around my garden at home with my wife without having to go in a caddy cart or something like that. Uh, from, a, from a mental point of view, I'm quite prepared for, for, for what's going on. Um, and I'm quite happy to judge it afterwards to say, wow, it's been good, or else if it hasn't, okay, what have we lost? We haven't lost anything. Um, yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm apprehensive. Of course I am, um, but I'm excited. Yeah. Exactly a month ago, I had the operation. Um, as it turned out, four valves went in and have effectively done the job. I'm using the bottom part of my lungs, which I don't think I was using before. The top part of my lung, my, the top right lobe, which has been neutralized with the valves, um, I believe has reduced in size and taken the pressure off the bottom part of my lungs. And in my learning to breathe by collapsing my shoulders and breathing from my stomach, it's got this part of my lungs going again and given them the room to function. There's less shortness of breath when he talks, less stopping between words and sentences. I went to the top of the house yesterday. You went to, yeah, one of, one of the things on our bucket list, we each made a bucket list, was... First day in ICU, we made a bucket list. Dad had to, Dad had to get upstairs to see... <laughs> <laughs> I said to Dad, Right, on my list, you've got to get upstairs to see whose room? Charlie, Charlie's. Charlie's bedroom, yeah. Dad made it up there yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. Without even stopping. Straight up, in fact, you and I were going, Dad, slow down, you know. <laughs> and they couldn't keep up. My bedroom was right above here. And there are 12 steps, quite steep steps. And I looked at that on the first night, and Jason, my son, put his shoulder under my bum, I took one step and he carried me the other 11. That's the way I got to this bedroom. Now, I walk up, not, I don't sleep in that bedroom, I sleep in another one, which is another eight steps away, and I take all of them quite happily. But the biggest thing is food. And, because Dad, you've always loved your food. Definitely over the last couple of years, food had you know, come back to kind of tiny portions because as you said one mouth for one breath if you ate too much there was no space to breathe and as a result you lost a lot of weight the more i ate the less i breathed because if i filled my stomach up i was putting so much pressure on my lungs that in point of fact my lungs couldn't bring in the air because of the pressure of my stomach <laughs> that's uh that's why they're envious <laughs> i'm going to withdraw from my fairly active business life. I'm going to enjoy my family. Am I breathing in better? Yes, I do. I think I take in more air, so maybe I get 10% from that, and maybe I've got an extra 30% of good lung working in my favor. So, I think the prognosis going forward is very good, <laughs> very good.